let's get into this trade because now I think we've got an opportunity to take a step back. Hearing what the people are saying, listening on the deal that Damian Lillard was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, and now you get a lot of a lot of content on this, Monty. A lot of people coming up with their own thoughts, their own ideas of what's what it's going to mean for the Milwaukee Bucks. I thought it was interesting in the side of how we now look at individual players. But I do want to start out because you weren't behind this mic yesterday when this deal broke down. You hear the trade, Damian Lillard not going to the Heat, going to the Bucks. Suns are involved. They ship DeAndre Ayton out. They get a couple of pieces. Portland gets their, their restart. First thing that popped into your mind when this deal went down was what? So the first thing I saw didn't include the entire trade with the three teams. All I saw, Damian Lillard going to Milwaukee. And I said, what the? How did this yeah. happen? Where did this come out of? That's my initial thought. Then I saw the other teams involved, and I was like, wow, the Suns got a good deal out of this. Not just the Milwaukee Bucks, mm-hmm. but the Suns, too. That's initially what I thought, and I don't think anyone fixated on that. I think everybody was just like, Dame is going to Milwaukee, which is great. So happy for Dame that he's going to ha- actually have an opportunity to contend for a title. But I I think the Suns really came out on top in this trade. You know, Doug, Doug hit it on, on the head yesterday and in saying, like, in, in all of this, you know, the Miami Heat were the biggest losers. And I think they were the actual team that everyone truly focused on right at the outset because we thought it was a done deal that he was going to Miami. I I don't want to be biased as a Bucs fan, so I kind of take myself out of it. I obviously thought of my team's luck in getting this done. Now they're good fortune. But then there's also other steps that come after that. And that's where I think we now are 25 hours after this deal was announced is, okay, what what are the real steps? What's going on here? And I saw something that just kind of took a back because I, I don't view how this trade is being done, and it has to deal with Giannis Antetokounmpo. And that's where I want to dive into, Monty, is people are now putting the target on Giannis's back, saying Giannis has no excuse, and this is now championship or bust with Milwaukee and specifically Giannis Antetokounmpo. Newsflash, it actually always has been championship or bust if you really look on the last couple of seasons. However, there's a huge caveat to this. You still have to look at the organization. And this right now is not the San Antonio Spurs. And I think if you looked at the Spurs in 1999, you saw their uh, future with Tim Duncan, you thought, man, this this could be really something special. Never did you think that you would win the titles that you did and be able to switch out David Robinson and Sean Elliott and Avery Johnson with the likes of Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker and have this whole other run. But the Spurs made quite a run. My point is this. As a Bucks fan and anybody who followed the Bucks, to just win one title was enough. Honestly, like it, everything Giannis could do afterwards was gravy. And I think a big portion of the Bucks fan base felt, you know what, if Giannis does leave after his contract, not that it's okay, but it's not like he's going to be hated because he delivered something that they never thought would be possible. So when I saw something today that said, Monty, that now Giannis has to bring a championship home, I don't think that that's the case. And I don't know if I'm talking from a Bucks perspective as a Bucks fan perspective. I think the pressure is now on Damian Lillard. I don't know if Damian Lillard goes to Miami and wins an NBA title or not, but now that he's with Milwaukee and they're the odds-on favorite to, to win the championship, like now Dame is in that conversation of players to never have won a you know, best player to never have won a title. This is a huge, huge deal for Damian Lillard, and I don't think that the pressure is on Giannis as much as it is on Damian Lillard, who now has to help bring that second championship to Milwaukee. Yeah, that's silly. Why is it all on Giannis? I didn't think that at all, at all. And I hear what you're saying. Once they won, it was he delivered already for the city, for your team. I agree that if he would have left, you weren't going to hold it against him, is what you're saying, right? Yeah, Because yeah. you weren't going to hold it against him. Just like I think most... Blazers fans are not holding it against Damian Lillard that he wants to go try and do something, right? I I don't see in what scenario you put the pressure strictly on Giannis. It's either on the entire team because keeping Chris Middleton 
was huge in mm-hmm. this trade, right? So it's like, oh, you guys are are totally stacked. And even though I didn't think of this when the trade happened, I agree with you. I think it's on Damian Lillard now at this point. And I agree that if he would have gone to Miami, I don't think the pressure would have been as much because Miami, we all like Miami is good and like they're fun to watch, but they also aren't to the level of like the Denver Nuggets of even the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, there, there was something missing there. Now with the Milwaukee Bucks, they're almost damn near perfect. Yeah. Like, Almost, you know, I don't think it is a clear win for them that they're going to win the championship. I don't. I think the Denver Nuggets are still the better team. They've been playing. They know what their their identity is there. Not that Milwaukee isn't going to be able to figure it out, but I, I do think Milwaukee comes out of the East and they should. And it, it, the pressure should be on Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. 100%. How is it not? How is it not? Uh, there, there are certain... <laughs> Points in history where we look back on, and I go back to the Kevin Durant scenario. It's not apples to apples here because Kevin Durant was a top top two pl- player in the NBA, top three player in the NBA at the time that he was traded, or at the time that he chose to leave Oklahoma City and then sign as a free agent with Golden State. That tilted the deck heavily in favor of Golden State, but even with them being so good, Monsi, I look at those titles that he won in Golden State is his titles, and I look at the 2015 and the 2019 as Steph, Clay's, and Draymond's titles. And I think that when you go throughout time, and this is actually one of the things with, with, with Jordan and LeBron, is their titles are pretty much always going to be their titles. Kobe's five, we think three of them are Shaq's. And if Kobe was here today, I think that he would tell you that 2008 and or excuse me 2009 and 2010 meant more because they were without Shaq they were his team and 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 that's how I feel like when Giannis has this when you look back on his career if he and Dame end up winning a title or two or three it's the one that they won in 2021 that is probably going to be the most special to Giannis because of everything that he went through and of being that big dog but now you look at what Damian Lillard is he is now while he may not be a top three player in the league like Durant was he has firmly now put himself in conversation of you need to win a title to really validate your career if he would have stayed in Portland he's immune from that there's like this protective shield around it because he's loyal to his city it's on the organization for not getting it done but he stayed loyal to his team once you want it out and now especially when you team up with Giannis who no offense to Nikola Jokic, but some people feel that Giannis is still the best player in the game today, despite Jokic's great success that he's had over the last couple of years. Now you put him with the, you know, who some think is the best player in the league, things change. Things are different now. Yeah, I agree. Damien has to win. That was just me choking. Yeah, no, he was choking, and I, I took a moment <laughs> just to make sure he wasn't actually choking. Uh, no, I'm we're alive. good. Everything's good. fine. We're good. I'm good. I just had to make sure that I didn't I'm have to alive. like try to do CPR <laughs> or something on air, but uh, uh, I would have figured it out. I thought I tried to push through it. I you thought did try was, to push through yeah. it. You know, yes. you tried. You were you, you yeah. did it, but uh, it was a little a, a bit of a but, scary moment. But now it's <laughs> but now it's Damian Lillard's. Like he's the one that. Yeah. And I love Damian Lillard. It's it's just the natural thing. Like the target is now on his back. Giannis has accomplished what he's already accomplished. What's different now in Milwaukee? Damian Lillard's there. So now it's on Lillard's shoulders to help bring that title to the Bucks. Do you think that these comments that Giannis has a target on his back came from his recent comments a week ago where he said, he's like, no, I like it here, but I need to win. And if that requires me to go elsewhere, I'm going to go elsewhere. Remember that? He just said that. So do you think that's why people are putting it on him? Because he said that, and now Milwaukee was like, all right, we we gave you what you wanted. Now go take it. I did not characterize those those comments like that. I characterized their comments, those comments as not leaving to go win another championship, but just leaving, period. Because if he leaves that organization, that is the equivalent of Kevin Durant leaving Oklahoma City. Unfortunately for them, though, there is no there is no Russell Westbrook anymore. There there is no uh, you know Paul George coming in. There there is none of that. If Giannis left the box, it is a full on rebuild, and you had traded a, a lot of assets to set up you know your squad that 
the Bucks would have been in the bottom ten of the NBA. They they would have. Like if Giannis leaves, that's so Giannis putting the bat signal out to the front office of being like, yeah, I want to make sure that this team is competitive. That could factor into my decision. It's him talking about a title, but I think it's mostly about him. It was him staying in Milwaukee, and I think that the two things are separate. As crazy as that sounds. I, I think that if the, the biggest deal is to make sure that, that he stays there and, and is competitive, and it's funny as well because there are reports that have popped up over the last 24 hours how Giannis, there was a Jimmy Butler when he was unhappy in Minnesota, the Bucks could have been interested, but he didn't want to give up Chris Middleton as part of that deal. Or something that Milwaukee was interested in Kyrie last year, and he didn't want any part of that. So just rumors and speculation and stuff that you hear. But he was willing enough to give up Drew Holiday to bring in Damian Lillard. Um, yeah, I had them separated, Monty. I really did. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I separated them in not of of winning a championship. It just it was just more of of him staying in Milwaukee and what it what he would need to do to stay in Milwaukee. Because I think once you leave. It is the automatic championship, but if he would have stayed in Milwaukee and didn't win, even though they were kind of competitive, I don't think that. I, I think he would have been fine with his legacy, if that makes any sense. I think so too. But then why make those comments? That's what's weird about it. Because I, I, up until he said those comments, I actually agree that I thought he wanted to stay in Milwaukee and just be competitive. And when he said that, I was like, huh, all this championship talk. Because now we put so much so much weight on winning a title. That's why Damian Lillard left Portland because we have put so much weight on it. And I did not, I thought Giannis was, he won that one and I thought he was happy with his legacy and he would not want to leave Milwaukee, especially because he's such a, he seems like such a simple guy. Like we always see these videos of him where he's like, I got this for free, this for free, this was given to me. Like he doesn't care about the flashy stuff or any of that. So I was taken aback by the comments. You, 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 you may have something there, considering I think that no matter whoever was around Giannis, I think the Bucks would have been a top four, top five team in the East. Mm-hmm. We saw what Portland was with name. They barely a team that was you know sniffing the playoffs, and then in the end, not. So there is a different level. I mean, obviously, Giannis is Dame's in a different class. Giannis is in a higher class of how we look at these different players. But there may be there may be something to that in, in what you're saying of um I just think with Dame staying in Portland it just each year just keep on getting less and less and at some point you got to hit the reset button. yeah you don't blame him I don't I don't no. blame him as much as you would want him to stay there uh yesterday when I was uh doing updates on the Jason Smith show with Mike Carmen he late at night he retweeted a lot of stuff Damian Lillard yeah. retweeted a lot of different things that people were tweeting and one of the things he retweeted was from a Blazers fan page I'm gonna guess and it said I truly believe that Damian Lillard is gonna go to Milwaukee win a championship come back to Portland and retire a Blazer and he retweeted that and so again the weight of a title is what he is looking at let me let me quick ask you this if the Bucks lose in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Boston Celtics whose fault is it in Milwaukee <sighs> That's such a tough question to ask right now without having seen them ever play but together. It, but I'll say this. It comes off of a season where they lost in the first round to the Miami Heat. So now you would make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but you didn't win a title. See, I think it's on Damian Lillard's It shoulders. is on Damian yeah. Lillard, but I wouldn't even say that that's a failure. Three seasons after winning an NBA title? like Yeah, and then getting to the Eastern Conference Finals? I think and losing to a team that's also right the there odds on, with they're you. They're the odds-on favorite to win a title. They so are? Any, any, yeah, right now they're the favorite. They're the favorite? Yeah, plus 350. Over over Denver? Yeah. Because I yes. think they're going to come out of the East. I don't think that they're not coming out of the East, barring any you know yeah. injuries or anything like that. But I don't, I don't see how the Celtics beat them, especially without Marcus Smart. 